Hello and welcome to 8-Bit Bones. My name is Jip and in today's video, I'm going to sh What the hell are you doing? Halloween was the last video. Go. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at 10 horror levels in non-horror games. Let's do f Over the years, video games, especially in the 8-bit and 16-bit era, had levels designed with a running theme, a blueprint if you will. A perfect example would be the water level, sometimes tricky with limited air for stress-induced gameplay. Who else can remember playing Sonic and crying because they drowned? No? Just me then. Desert levels with its sinking sand and scorching sun. Snow levels with limited visibility and slippery platforms. And who can forget volcano levels with their hotty hot and burny burn? My favourite type of level has to be the horror themed level. With its eerie music, ghostly atmosphere and spooky sprites. So, for that reason, I have made a top 10 of my favourite horror levels in non-horror games. Off my list at number 10 is Garfield, caught in the act for the Sega Mega Drive. Released in 1995, this rather decent Sega platformer has you play as Garfield, the lasagna eating cat from the creator Jim Davis, who actually hand drew all the sprites in this game. After Odie scares Garfield, the TV breaks. They try and fix it, with inevitably some parts being thrown away. An electronic monster called Glitch appears, who transports you into the TV. You then go on an adventure to find a way out. All the levels resemble cliché TV genres, with level 1 being the horror-themed level, Count Slobula's Castle. Garfield looks great dressed up like a classic Universal Dracula. The music is spooky and creepy with good use of church organs and ominous melodies. Your weapon is a torch, or is it a lit stake? You can also collect skulls to use as a projectile weapon. The level features skeletons, spooky arms reaching out of graves, bats, ghosts, and crypts you can fall in. Jumping on the graves reveals an enemy or an item. Progress to the right and get to the last hole in the ground, where you will find Count Slobula's crypt. This boss is quite easy when you know what to do. Jump over him, let him go in the coffin, watch out for the really annoying bats and jump up revealing the sun. Do this three times and you can move on. Garfield caught in the act is a great platformer and very enjoyable with decent 16-bit graphics. Now, let's see some more horror levels. The 90s was the decade of cool. Put shades on anything and it will transform to a 100% rad wizard cool. Dwarf Lemon Conifer! Cool! A tap that runs hot and cold at the same time! Cool! Dyson Hoover! Cool! Cool Spot, the 7-Up mascot, was a product of the 90s, debuting in his first game on the Mega Drive and SNES. A great platformer with groovy music and far out levels. But my number 9 spot, no pun intended, goes to the horror level and spot goes to Hollywood. I'm playing the PS1 version. It was also released on the Sega Saturn and Mega Drive respectively. This isometric platformer has perplexing controls, but after a while of getting used to them, it's okay, but not great, and definitely not as bad as the time I ate Captain Wanta's sesame cake. Just a chip video game on. Stop eating my sesame cake. Stop eating my sesame cake! Bag of shit. Once again, you must collect spots and other collectibles across levels reminiscent of genres from classic movies. 
The horror zone is made up of six levels. First is set in a graveyard. Flying on a broomstick, you must dodge gravestones, bats, werewolves, crows, and jack o' lanterns. This shmup style level, with its creepy music and sound effects, is actually a lot of fun. The jack o' lantern warp section is a really nice touch, reminiscent of Space Invaders. Collect the stars and progress to the next level, the generic haunted house. The pumpkins return with axe throwing skeletons, ghosts, and devils. I really appreciate the Vlad the Impaler picture on the wall. Nice. Find secrets behind bookcases and click the five stars. Nothing special, so let's move on. The deadly dungeon starts like an escape room. You're running away from fire, dodging obstacles and toxic waste. Not the best of the six, but still fun. Then you're in the laboratory. It's similar to the last level, but you're not escaping the fiery doom. The frog and mummy enemies look really cool though. Next, a hunchback of Notre Dame stair climb. Reach the top, that's pretty much it. Take out the swinging hunchbacks and try not to get too frustrated with the platforming, made especially difficult with the isometric view. Shit. Shit. Finally, it's the bats in the belfry. Similar to the last level, Spot needs to reach the top to take out the bat boss. Spot Goes to Hollywood is a fun game, visually not bad with some great music. The controls not so great in the isometric view, but I really enjoy the horror section, especially the graveyard shmup level. Let's move on. When Disney aren't taking over the world, they are making decent video games. At number 8 on my list is Mickey Mania, a great platformer that has Mickey travelling through his iconic cartoons from history. I'm playing the PlayStation 1 version that was released two years after the original called Mickey's Wild Adventure. I love the art style of this game, especially on level 1, Steamboat Willie where it starts off black and white and gradually turns to colour. The level in question is based on the 1933 Disney short The Mad Scientist. Bat, check. Skeletons, check. Deadly knives, check. Creepy dungeon, check. Get past the first section and you get to ride a cart for some frustrating jumps. Followed by some lovely looking 3D scrolling. Progress through the spooky laboratory and you ride an elevator. Take out the skeletons and enter the room where Mickey performs his own experiment. Enter the room with the mad scientist and defeat him. And you rescue Pluto, subsequently turning the mad scientist into a baby. A nice little platformer with lovely graphics and fun music. This game is perfect for any Disney enthusiast. Incoming! DuckTales! This 1990 action platformer, developed, published by Capcom and based on the Disney animated series, is an NES classic and even got a remake in 2013 that has since been discontinued in 2019. You play as Scrooge McDuck as he travels around the world and outer space in search of five treasures to add to his fortune. The Transylvania level is a lot of fun and makes number seven on my list. Skeleton ducks, ghosts, Mummy monsters and the Beagle Boys haunt this level. That really has to be explored. Rescue your nephews and work out puzzles. Collect as many items and find all the secrets. Use your cane to take out the enemies. After exploring the level, you can ride a minecart with some precise jumping. Work out the route and meet the boss, Magicka Dispel. You will have to revisit this level later on to take on Dracula Duck, but I love this level because it was the first game and first level I ever played on an NES, so it's very nostalgic, with its cheesy pop horror enemies and secrets. The tight controls really work and graphically, this 8-bit classic looks great. However, I did really enjoy the remake with its art style and voice acting from original cast members. 
Alan Young, who voiced Scrooge McDuck, sadly passed away not long after making this remake. DuckTales on the NES is a fantastic game. If you haven't played it, do. Let's move on. Another Disney game? Wow, Disney and horror go together like fish and chips. This time it's David Perry's Aladdin. This 1993 action platformer is arguably one of the best games on the Mega Drive and the level on my list is level 4, the Sultan's Dungeon. Complete with its dark atmosphere, skeleton enemies that replace their skulls with bombs, bats, obviously. I love the rendition of Arabian Nights from the movie soundtrack, it really gives the level an eerie feel. Traverse some platforms, don't get hit by the balls on chains and spikes. I love all the little details in the walls like the skeletons and the Sebastian cameo, all chained up for some naughty torture. Oh my! This level was quite short, but as a kid playing this for the first time, seeing a character from a different Disney movie blew my mind, and I think this must have been the first Easter egg I ever experienced. Let's move on. Quackshot starring Donald Duck is a Metroidvania style Indiana Jones inspired 1991 Sega platformer. In a nutshell, you must find items given to you by characters in order to progress in the game, and open dungeons and complete puzzles, ultimately to find the treasure of King Garuzia. On the map screen you can select a level. You must do them in a specific order to eventually progress into Dracula's castle. So the level on my list is Transylvania. Be sure to acquire the bubblegum ammo. Spooky trees, bats and bad guys feature in this level. The music is fun with a spooky feel. Make your way right jumping on platforms. If you fall into the water it's instant death. You finally reach Dracula's castle and because you got all the right weapons and items you can use your weapon to blast through this wall. I really like the castle with its ghosts and skeleton enemies. Keep heading right swapping up the correct weapon to make your way to the room with big ghosts that turn into lots of little ones. Head up and use the platform plunger as the walls start to close in on you. I really like the paintings with the eyes moving, it's a real nice touch. When you reach Dracula, use, use a weapon a on him and defeat him. A great level! I really like the puzzle elements and length it takes to reach Dracula. Nice graphics and gameplay. Let's move on. <coughs> the Shinobi series is an iconic Sega franchise. First seen in arcades in 1987, it has had dozens of titles across multiple platforms. My number 4 though is for Shinobi 3, Return of the Ninja Master for the Mega Drive. What can I say other than this is probably one of the best games on the system. The controls are tight, visually stunning and the music is one of the best soundtracks of all time. The level I am picking for my list is the level Body Weapon. This facility houses a morbid biological weapons laboratory that looks straight from the imagination of H.R. Geiger or from a Brian Usner movie. In this level you must take on and fight mutated brains and heavy duty ooze monsters, descending deeper into this level past the laboratory and mid boss section that has you fight a big batch of brains. Once defeated, you can then enter the fleshy, flawed domain of the hideous biological weapon Hydra. With giant B-movie bugs that come up from the ground, you must traverse this level cautiously as Hydra is in the background taking aim. The fleshy landscape for some reason reminds me of the Blu-ray cover for the body horror movie Society. Sinking into the floor does not help as you race to get to the end where you finally face Hydra.
This grotesque torso attacks with its hands and shoots lasers from its mouth. Get used to its attack and defeat it. Let's move on to number three. As a huge fan of kart racers, I have always enjoyed racing with friends and completing career modes to unlock new vehicles. From humble beginnings with Super Mario Kart on the SNES, to the current generation's plethora of quality kart games like Crash Team Nitro and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Sega released their own crossover party, sport and racing games over the years with the Sega All-Stars series, formerly known as the Superstars series. I was very excited about playing the fourth instalment and spiritual successor to Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing, with Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing transformed, and I was not disappointed. What really sparked my interest was the vehicles being able to transform at certain points in the race, being able to fly, drive and speedboat around beautifully crafted tracks that resemble some classic Sega games like Golden Axe, Shinobi and Afterburner. I really like the drifting mechanics and items you can use throughout the level to battle your opponents. This is a great game and the level graveyard gig makes my list at number 3. It's a House of the Dead inspired level with great atmosphere and creepy details like zombie spectators and giant spiders. The music is straight up inspired from the magician's theme from House of the Dead. It sounds awesome! This level looks and plays very well, with the polished drifting mechanics and flips that help you get the upper hand on the rest of the races. Racing on rooftops, through the haunted mansion and the laboratory really gets the heart pumping. Your transform section is a speedboat where you race through toxic waste great multiplayer racing game to play with friends and is a lot of fun unlocking some classic Sega and pop culture avatars like Alex Kidd and Wreck-It Ralph. If you like kart racing games I implore you to play this one. Time for a reboot. SNK's outrageous run and gun action game returns with Metal Slug 3. Storytelling aside, you blast your way through levels collecting new weapons, awesome power ups, and using a multitude of vehicles like the Camel Slug and Slug Marina. This game series is fast, fun, and hilarious. So, why is this game on my list? Well, it's for Mission 2. Zombies have overrun this level with a banging soundtrack and awesome reanimated enemies. Choose your path and take on the hordes. Return to the Living Dead style. I love the enemies in this game, vomiting and exploding zombies to name a few. But be careful, if you get killed, you reanimate into one of the undead. I love the animation. This is such a fun idea and I love clearing a path with a violent vomit blood attack. With an array of awesome weapons like the heavy machine gun or rocket launcher, you destroy everything in your path. Take on helicopters, no problem, and save the people from a fate worse than death. Find secret routes and take on the final boss that looks straight from an X-Files episode. great game in this great franchise and worth playing with friends, awesome graphics and animations. If you haven't played a Metal Slug game, please do. Mind you, there's a lot of gators, uncommon number, big ones. It'll take more than a prehistoric reptile to scare you, Shirley. An ancient predator with a big mouth, Dutch. I don't want to know what just touched my leg. My number one is the level Country Pursuits in Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption 2. 
This level has all the cliches and tropes of a classic creature feature horror movie. Dark atmosphere, creepy music, and a murky environment. Also, spoiler alert, if you haven't played Red Dead 2 yet, please stop watching now. You start the level by visiting a man about a boat. After talking with him, he asks for your help. You oblige and wade in alligator-filled, waist-deep swamp. He scares you with creepy stories about the area. Now stay close. Make sure you follow my line. Oh, I fully intend to, Thomas. You too, Mr. Arthur. He then asks you for help to find his business partner called Jules. Obviously, you split up and go searching. When you do find Jules, he tells you that he was attacked by a monster. What are you doing? There's a monster. You and your crew meet up again, and after the mandatory jump scare, the boat is stuck on a log. Jules gets out and is attacked. You save him with a stressful and sweaty rescue. Hang in there, Jules! as you can! Come on! Hurry! Hurry! Give him the boy! Put him here! Come on! Give him here! This on me! Come on! Come on! Come on! Quickly! Quickly! This thing hurts pretty bad! In an almost homage to the movie Jaws, you fend off this giant monster. Great level and a great game. Later, you can hunt the giant alligator. I did. Did you? Hey, hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more 8-Bit Bones content, then please subscribe and give us a like. Until next time, see ya.